If you look at all the uh, surveys in terms of our worst fear, public speaking is number one or number two on most people's lists. Now, I don't pretend to be a great public speaker, but there are some things that I've learned over the years in addressing a variety of groups, large and small, that have worked for me. This is Pat Bosco, formerly Vice President for Student Affairs at Kansas State University, where I served a variety of capacities, but mostly working with students and families. This podcast addresses our interest of wanting to be more authentic, more real, more sincere in our daily lives. As we think about being an effective public speaker or being a little more effective in how we address a variety of topics and groups, I think it all has to begin with us feeling like we have something to say. And as I sit down and think about addressing a group, I try to assemble some remarks that are unique, that are going to be helpful, but respond to something maybe that has never been expressed quite the way I'm going to express it during my my time. That if it's an opportunity for us to thank individuals, do it in a meaningful, sincere way. If you're going to have a chance to express a vision, think about it in a way that communicates a sense of promise and ownership. If you're presentation gives you an opportunity to express a helpful hints, think about putting yourself in the individual audience's shoes and what would be most helpful. And assemble remarks that are meaningful, unique, and uh, that are intentional and have a degree of passion and enthusiasm. Now, enthusiasm, if you think about the word enthusiasm, it's in the spirit, and that's what enthus is. And if you look at the last four letters of enthusiasm, they are I-A-S-M. I am sold myself. If you want to display a degree of energy, a passion for a subject, as you share your remarks to any audience, you want to make sure you're sold yourself, that you feel very passionate, you have a sense of ownership with, with with your message. That makes a huge difference in the way you come across to any group, either large or small. It affects your body language, the language that you use, your overall message. Now, I'm not saying you have to jump up and down, but that you put yourself in a position that you have a degree of energy as you speak and share your message, that it's important to you, and that kind of commitment is transmitted to your your audience, either large or small. It's okay to practice. Uh, It's okay to prepare. As a matter of fact, preparation becomes the key to effective public speaking. I write out all of my speeches. People think that I'm impromptu, but but frankly, I write them all out in longhand on yellow pieces of paper. And then I take those remarks and put them in bullet points. Uh, And there are always two or three bullet points for every speech that, that that I make. So it's not impromptu, it's a lot of preparation in front of a mirror sometimes. And if you're uh, thinking about dressing up, dress up in front of a mirror so that it becomes very natural in your presentation. If you're going to wear a tie and you've not worn a tie in six months, you might find that it, uh, it helps to practice with what you're, what you're wearing. Don't be afraid to express your personal saga, to develop a, a relationship with the audience that you have a chance to share why you're there. And if you can, in a sincere, meaningful way, to display empathy that you are in fact like them. But it has to be sincere and it has to be an intentional. Uh, You don't want to tell any untruths or or to try to overstate um, your relationship with any group. It's okay to visit the room that you're uh, asked to present. It help you feel a little more comfortable to check out the uh, public address system. You're at the podium. Uh, everything that you could do to prepare for, for your opportunity to address a group is most appreciated by everyone, including your audience. If you have a chance to uh, have a question answer session, make sure you repeat the questions before you address them. That gives everyone a chance to hear the question, gives you a chance to reframe the question, and also to tell you the truth, it gives you a chance to think about an answer that makes sense. I like the advice of of foreshadowing an audience, telling them what you're going to share, and then go ahead and share it, and then conclude by uh, indicating that you, in fact, shared shared this and that with with an audience. 
it's important that you own the room. And what do I mean by that? Well, I would tell our admissions representatives to treat a room, whether it's a, a library or a classroom, like it's your own. That means showing up ahead of time and 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 feeling the 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 auditorium or the or the classroom or the room that you're going to be a, addressing a group in. That it's okay to be like a dog and maybe urinate in each of the corners to own the room in a very uh, a figurative, not literal sense. Uh, to take your audience seriously, to respect what brought them to your address. And that means being able to explain to them how important they are to your message, to bring them into the tent of your, of your message. That I, I always try to make sure that whether I'm addressing a large or small group, that I look all of them in the eyes once during my presentation. That means making sure my body language is open, that I'm taking care of each corner of the room with, with my mannerisms, even changing the front of the room to the back of the room if I'm able to do that. To put ourselves in a position where you're with the audience, that, they're, that you minimize the distance, that you eliminate as many interferences as you can between yourself and the group that you're addressing. Public speaking is one of the most feared activities that we, we have as, as human beings. And I don't pretend to be uh, the most effective public speaker. I've had to work at it. And I'm always improving by thinking about what are some ways that I could identify with the audience through preparation, through developing a, a message that's meaningful not only to, to myself, but to, to those that I have the honor of presenting to. It's fun to put yourself in the shoes of your audience. That helps you think about the time, length, and the remarks that you make. It gives you an opportunity to be real, not, just, not to take yourself too seriously. That's where authenticity comes in for effective public speakers more than anything else.